Okay, in lesson three, we're going to look at configuring the SEP environment. A number of lesson objectives we're going to cover here. We're going to look at starting and navigating the SEPM. How do we do that? Describing the different policy types and the components, the console authentication, and licensing the SEP environment. Let's have a look first at navigating around the SEPM. So first of all, we need to understand the management and the console communications are all secure. We can see the different ports that are being used between the SEPM console and the management server. So how do we start the SEPM console? Well, we can get to it from the Start menu, Programs, and Set Manager. We can also start it from the Manager Web Access, where we get the choice of choosing the Web Console or the Protection Center. Here we can see the logging screen of how we log in, and notice we'll need to have the server name and the port. When you log in for the first time, you're given the welcome page. You don't have to see this every time if you don't want to. You can click the checkbox at the bottom to say not to show this again. It is quite useful, though, giving you quick task options with the links that are shown in blue. Here we can see the navigating the SEPM console. On the top, we can see the menu options. We have the refresh, the help, and the log off. The help will give you information about the product version. On the left-hand side, down the uh, side, we can see the navigation bar, showing us the different pages. And in the central part, we'll see the panes and the tabs. Here we can see all the different console pages that are available to us. The home page is the default one. That will give us the one view of all the protection on all the clients. The next one down, monitors page, is uh, giving us tables and charts to uh, monitor the whole network environment. The reports enable us to set up detailed reports or quick reports. These can be scheduled or ad hoc. The policies page enables us to manage the different policy types and tasks related to policies. The clients page enables us to create client hierarchy in the group structure and manage those client management tasks. And the admin page is for creating administrators or managing the servers. Let's look at them in more detail now. Here we can see an example of the home page. We can see the security status at the top, showing currently it's good with a green tick. We could have a warning saying that the security status needs attention. We can see the license status on the right-hand side, we currently see the trial license ends in 57 days. We can, of course, add licenses to this to ensure that it's a permanent license. We can see the endpoint status, showing us our current protection. And at the bottom right, we can see our favorite reports. This is the only area of this particular screen that we can actually tailor per administrator. You can decide on which your favorite reports are to be shown here. Here we see the monitors page. The monitors page gives us far more detailed information and refreshes more frequently than the reports page. We can select the summary, which is what we currently have, or the tabs across the top will give us more detail into the logs. We can run commands from the monitors page and set up notifications. Here's our reports page, and we can do quick reports or scheduled reports. Obviously, the scheduled reports you can set a, to run at a certain time, and they can be sent as an email to different administrators. Here we have the policies page, and this is where we manage, create, and edit policies for each of the different areas. We've also got certain policy components which are the generic ones that affect certain policies only. We have the clients page, and here we can see the default hierarchy with the My Company and the default group only being displayed. On the right-hand side, in the, under the default group area, 
This is the information being highlighted from the current default group that can be seen on the middle area. When you're managing your clients, do make sure you've selected the correct group structure to display the information about the policies, the details, and the installed packages for that particular group. And we have the admin page. We can see the administrators created uh, admin and Joe Chen currently. We're highlighting admin so we can see the details of the admin user on the right hand side. We can see the tasks that we can perform on this particular user. And on the lower area, we can see different tabs for administrators, domains, servers, install packages, and licenses. So you need to select the separate tab area depending on what you want to manage. Let's now look at the policy types and components. Here we can see all the different policy types available to us and the areas that we can manage within them. In the first section on the left hand side we're highlighting the virus and spyware protection. Now virus and spyware protection enables us to uh, check each file and process that's running for viruses and spyware. We also have email scan capability. We use the auto protect to be constantly scanning that, uh, those files for potential problems. And we can install the uh, download protection and sonar configuration there too. Notice we have Mac settings available to us now within the virus and spyware protection. In the central area, we can see we have firewall policies and the settings that we can change, like the built-in rules and the protection stealth configuration. We can set up intrusion protection, intrusion prevention, should I say, with the overall settings and exceptions to that. We can configure the application device control, which applications and devices we're going to allow and disallow. We have the live update, the content and the schedule that we wish to download. And we have the exceptions policy. Here we can see the policy components in more detail. We can see the virus and spyware scan schedules can be managed using a, a scan template. This enables the administrator to set up a template so it doesn't have to be repeated every time. We have the management server lists. These enable us to configure the client communications. And these can be a, a number of these to enable us to set up different communications for the different client groups. And we have the file fingerprint lists, the host groups, network services, the adapters, and also the hardware devices. These are policy components that are used particularly within the firewall, intrusion prevention, and the application device control. We'll come to those later. Let's look at the console authentication. We can set up a number of system administrators. It's a good idea to create other administrators You'll have the admin, which is the default one that was created during the installation, but you must manage these. And this enables us to manage the domains and the access for these administrators. Let's have a look at the differences between system administrators, administrators, and limited administrators. Limited administrators, you can set up a refined, explicitly granted rights for particular groups, domains, or policies very useful for uh, maybe giving certain help desk uh, tasks to users. The administrators view and manage the individual domain and everything within that domain. Whereas the system administrator is the highest level administrator that can manage all domains. So how do we add an administrator account? Well we need to go to the admin page Ensure we have administrators selected on the tab below, and then we can add an administrator. And we can see on the right-hand side the questions that will be asked. Things like the username, we need to put in the full name, and the email address. You do have options to lock the account if we think that the particular account is trying to be hacked into. That's under the general tab. Under the Access Rights tab, we can modify the type of administrator it is we're creating and the access rights that they have. 
If you choose system administrator, they are given full access permissions to all areas of that particular uh, SEP manager. If you choose the administrator, that's where you can define certain site rights. If you choose the limited administrator, then we can choose the different policies and different group and access rights. On the right hand side, we can see the authentication that this particular user is going to use. You could have the password settings and whether or not they expire. And you can also set up directory authentication. You would obviously need to have configured access to a directory server for this to occur. Here we can see an example of the limited administrator with certain package rights. So note we've chosen limited administrator in the top section and then we've ticked the manage installation packages which enable us to then go into the package rights option and decide on whether or not they have read only or full access. Here we're looking at the policy rights for a limited administrator and we can choose what policies they can manage. Obviously unticking will uh, disallow that particular access. And this is our authentication with the Active Directory or an LDAP directory server. So we can configure our directory servers and we need to choose the IP address and the name. It's a good idea once you set up the directory server to test the account works. So if you set up a directory server access for this, for this particular administrator, we then need to decide on their username and password and their server and port. Note the domain down here. In this particular option, it applies to a SEP domain, not an Active Directory domain. So once we've set up some passwords, or should I, once we've set up some administrators, we can change their passwords, and this is a good security feature, especially the admin password that's been created on installation. You can also use the reset pass.bat if you were to forget or lose the password. So here we can see if you were to run the reset pass.bat, the administrator would have to enter their email address and it would then email back the new password. Let's have a look at the new licensing features in SEP 12.1. So the role of licensing is for dictating compliance to ensure that you are not overextending the number of clients that you have uh, paid for. So there are different types of compliance with the small business edition or the enterprise edition. You can also provide ability with the client authentication token, the CAT token. Now depending on the type of license you have will depend on if you're using hard enforcement or soft enforcement is brought in if you overextend your license. Hard enforcement is used by the small business edition and it will have, uh, occur on expired trial licenses. It will stop all the content updates and you'll start to log and warn about all the notifications that are coming in. The enterprise edition uses soft enforcement um, and that will never, will never prevent content updates from occurring but it will start warnings and log notifications. So the list of different license types and grace values that occur will again depend on the product type that you've installed. There are different types. You have a trial license that's installed automatically with the SEP 12.1 and that has a 60 day value. You could have an upgrade which is for the enterprise edition only. You may have an over deployed license status and that's obviously where you've gone over the deployment number of clients or seats. It doesn't manage users in that way, it's just purely the number of clients that it's in, uh, looking for. You could have a never expiring license status which is used by the unmanaged clients and you could of course have a paid status if you've installed uh, a license file. 
I say the different grace values will depend on the license type that you've installed. So how can we manage our licenses? Well, we need to be on the admin page and we need to choose the licenses tab option at the bottom. Here we can see the current license is a trial license and it expires. We can see the detail about the trial license in the central area. At the bottom we can see we can activate the license with a serial number or a license file. From the home page on the licensing status we can look at the licensing, licensing details and that will give us information about our current licensing status whether or not we're running a trial license, when it expires, and our current deployment numbers. Here's an example of the license file that you may well acquire um, once you pay for the license, and the information inside which will give us details about when it's to um, start and when it's to end, and the count number of license currently uh, included in this license file. Um, recovering license keys. Uh, the keys needed to uh, start the SEPM are placed in a recovery.zip which is created at the end of the configuration or upgrade process. And it's a good idea to ensure that you have copies of this uh, file. So back up the license files is the best practice. So at the end of this, license, this uh, lesson, we can now hopefully have learned about how to log on and how to navigate around the SEPM. We also learned how to describe the policy types and the associated components. <laughs>